Hey guys, it's Matt here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to downgrade an iPhone 4 to whatever version of iOS you want. So firstly, you're going to need a GSM iPhone 4. Now, if you have a CDMA one like this, you're out of luck, and you can tell because it uses the newer style antenna bands here that the 4S uses, and it does not have a SIM card slot. So if you have one of these ones, you're out of luck, I'm sorry. These things are basically stuck to running iOS 7, unless they're running something older already, which then don't update. <laughs> However, the GSM iPhone 4s like this one can be downgraded to any version of iOS 7, any version of iOS 6, iOS 5.1.1 and iOS 4.3.5. Another requirement is that you're going to need a Mac that can run an older version of Mac OS. Unfortunately, newer Mac OS, I've tried it, it does not work with this software, and I've had the best of luck running Mac OS 10.10 Yosemite to make this work. So you can see here, I'm on my Mac's desktop here, and sorry about the low frame rate, it's just this Mac not being very powerful, but yeah, this is the perfect machine for this downgrade thing that we're gonna be doing here. So first of all, you're gonna need your iPhone 4 and you're gonna need your charger. Now, ultimately, one thing you're also gonna need, and something I actually forgot to download, but that's fine, I can grab it real quick, is the IPSW file. Now, what I do is I go to IPSW.me and you can just grab your files that way. So if I wanna go, let's just scroll through here and find the iPhone 4. So right here, iPhone 4 GSM. If you have a CDMA iPhone 4, uh, this is not going to work. So you're gonna need a GSM iPhone 4. Ignore the fact that these are unsigned, it doesn't matter that they're unsigned. So you're gonna need to grab the IPSW for iOS 4, the last one if you're gonna be doing this, or you pick the one that you want. If you're gonna be going with iOS 5, pick this one right here. This IPSW does not work. You're gonna need the one with that ends in 06, not 08. I don't know what the difference is to be honest, but it doesn't like this one, so go with this one. And while this is chugging along, let's go ahead and put this phone into DFU mode and get it plugged in. So you're gonna need to plug in your phone to your computer and put it into DFU mode. So what you're gonna need to do is obviously plug in the phone and then hold down both the power and the home button for 10 seconds. So once you finish with that, just keep holding the home button until iTunes either recognizes the phone or your Mac lights up or just nothing happens, I guess. But the phone should not turn back on, or at least it shouldn't look like it's on. It says that iTunes has detected an iPhone in recovery mode, so we can hit okay on that. So we're gonna just quit out of iTunes because you're not gonna need it. The tool that I'll be providing will actually restore everything for you, so you don't need to use iTunes. So what you're gonna need to do is grab the tool actually. So this tool, I have no clue where this actually is, so I'll be leaving a link in the description for a download so then you guys can actually use this too and follow along with the video. They have alternative tools out there. This is the one that I use and I'll make sure that you can actually follow along exactly because other ones use different command syntaxes and can be confusing. So you're gonna need to place this IPSW file into the folder that you just downloaded with the tool and then open up that tool and you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here. You won't have all these IPSW files. That's just something that I have done. You are going to need a stock iOS 7.1.2 IPSW file. If you don't have this, then this will not work. It needs to reference this file so then it can restore it and use the new bootloader to load the old OS. So you'll still have the new Apple logo, but it will still boot into iOS, whatever. So what we're gonna wanna do is type in CD space and then drag the folder that you want, which would be this folder here, drag it in here. So then it takes you to that folder directory. Now you can type it in manually, but there's no reason to do that. Then you're gonna to wanna to type in this command here. Now what this is basically doing is it's telling the script here to make the IPSW based off of this file with this as the reference file. So you're going to need iOS 4.3.5 or whatever version you want, and then iOS 7.1.2. So yeah, at this point, it's going to pull from your iPhone to then make the IPSW file. Now this does take a little while.
that only took forever, but it's done now. So if we go back into here, yep, we have a custom IPSW file for our iPhone 4. So if we go back into terminal here, let me just see where the command is because it's been forever since I've done this. All you need to do at this point is run the restore script. So if we do period slash restore.sh, it'll then ask us for the iOS version. And here is the list of every version of iOS that you can use on the iPhone 4. So every version of iOS 7, every version of iOS 6, 5.1.1, and 4.3.5, and 4.3.3. Now I have picked 4.3.5, so I'm going to select 2 and hit enter. And what it's going to do is it's going to put the iPhone 4 into Pwn DFU mode, which is going to get, I don't know why it says no Apple device in DFU mode. All right, let's try that again. So we got this back into DFU mode. I don't know what that was. Let's try that again. Um, so let's go back to terminal and just run that again. Okay, there we go. I don't know what that was. So you can see it's extracting the file system. It's then going to, once it does that, restore it to the iPhone. And I'll show you what that looks like when that starts. All right, you can see here, we're at a white screen as normal. And you can see we have the classic Apple logo right there. It's not really showing up on camera very well. So you can see it's waiting to restore it. And that's what it looks like when it's restoring. It uses that custom little flower logo. It depends on the tool that you use. They obviously use their own custom logos, but the terminal is then going to send iOS 4 straight to this iPhone. Is it there are two loaded symbols overlaid on each other for some reason but i guess that's normal so we're sitting here with the apple logo we've got the loading symbol here and this says done so i'm going to assume that this is waiting to finish i will force restart this thing if it does not and that's something i've noticed with these kinds of procedures is that stuff that seems like it would break something actually doesn't when i first restored ios 5 to this phone and actually there it goes when I first restored iOS 5 to this phone, it actually took me to a recovery screen, but all I did was restart the phone and it fixed it. So if you see a screen like that, don't worry too much. It's going to fix itself. So yeah, here we go. You can see it's actually doing a verbose boot for its first startup, which it seems to do on everything that I've tried that on. It's, it, it's interesting how this one's in verbose. Yeah, so once this is done, it will take you straight to the setup screen. Now, I don't know if, I don't remember if iOS 4 has a setup screen or if it just says connect to iTunes. And there it goes. You can see we have the Apple logo and the progress bar, which now just, as I say that, turned back into verbose text. And there we go. We are in. And yeah, it looks like it wants me to hook this thing up to iTunes. So that's what we will do to get this thing activated. And it needs a SIM card. So I'll do that too. So let's get the SIM card in. I know it's gonna want one, so I'll just do it right now. Yeah, please. Yeah, my computer is now saying there's no SIM card. And there we go. And there we are with iOS 4 installed on this iPhone 4. So let's get the SIM card ejected real quick. There we go. Since I don't need that. So yeah, that's how you downgrade your iPhone 4 to any iOS version that you want. As always, leave any comments below if you have any trouble. I'll do my best to see if I can get back to them and see if I can help you out. And hopefully, you learned something today, and even if you're not going to be doing this with your iPhone, hopefully it's at least interesting to you.